Today's conversation is sponsored by First Generation Capital Partners. Because I've seen too many people who they had that, that limited mindset. You know, uh, I can't do it. Well, man, you might be a millionaire, but I, I, I'll be good where I'm at. Why? Why can't you see yourself getting there? Strive to be the best. You only here, you only on earth for so long. You, only have, you have a shelf life. Strive to be the best. Don't limit yourself. Welcome to the Going Long Podcast. We're back once again to continue to help to educate you so that you feel much more comfortable as well as confident investing beyond your backyard. And yes, guess who I am? I'm your host, Billy Keels, and I'm super excited to welcome you back to another amazing conversation today. Like, it's really, really awesome. So I'm sure you're going to get so much out of today, uh, at today's conversation, especially if you are continuing to figure out how you want to go all in on your investing. And so before we get to the conversation, though, there are a couple of things that I do like to remind you, first and foremost, that you are part of an amazing family, the Going Long podcast family. Yes. And you know what? We continue to move up the charts. Thanks to largely in part because you continue to download the episodes, you continue to share the episodes, you continue to talk about the things that you are hearing from our wonderful guests on each and every conversation. And many, many, many of you want to leave your honest written reviews and ratings. And there are a lot of you that already have done that. And so if you're one of those people that every week you listen to me or twice a week, I guess at this point that you're listening to me and you're saying, you know what? I really need to do that. Especially if you are listening on the Apple podcast platform, listen, there's a very short video, just click the video. It'll walk you through it. And you can talk about any of the episodes. You can talk about the things that you like, the things that you love, the things that you want to see and hear us change. This is your platform. So we need your feedback. So just let us know and keep going out there. So that's the first thing. The second thing is a lot of you want to continue to listen to episodes. I'm going to try and make this really, really clear for everybody. When you want to hear the newest episodes, just go to billykeels.com. When you get there, you will see that there is a podcast tab, right? There's a little bit of jumping around that happens, but go to billykeels.com first and foremost, and it's going to take you somewhere. And then when you get there, go to the podcast tab and you can listen to every single episode the, you can see the video versions, you can listen to the audio versions, just go there and get that done and it'll be awesome. So listen, I've kind of talked about these things, but anyway, I know you want to talk about how you can go all in <laughs> and being able to do that in a way that makes sense for you, for your family. Today, you're going to hear from uh, someone who is a retired military uh, retired military person who's really figured out how to not only gain more control of his life by going in all in specifically, he really is in, has started enjoying uh, single family residences. He's done a lot of other things since then. And now he's continuing to build a platform to be able to help bring other people that are both military as well as civilians so that you can get more control over your life. So in just a couple minutes, or actually just a couple seconds, we're going to get to our conversation with Aaron Goins. So you know what, if you want to understand how to find long distance investing success all in homes, then guess what? Today's a conversation that you're going to want to listen to until the very last word. You know why? Because today's guest not only is an Air Force veteran who's on a mission to serve military as well as civilian real estate investors. You know what? He's also served in various states. He's also served in other countries, I think like South Korea, something like that. Maybe he's going to tell us a little bit more about that. He's also worked in the aeronautics industry as a supply chain analyst. And today he is the CEO of All In Homes LLC. It gives me great pleasure to welcome to today's conversation, Mr. Aaron Go. Goins. Aaron, welcome to the show, man. And man, Billy, man, it's been a pleasure, man. Thank you so much, man. I, I'm, I'm very, very excited, man. Very, very excited. Well, that makes two of us because this has been a long time coming. We've been <laughs> working on figuring <laughs> yeah. out, figuring out our schedules and stuff like right. that. Um, right, right. And, and I'm really, really looking forward to you sharing your story uh, with the Going Along family today. And you know what? The thing is, as you probably know, I know you know this already. I like to ask everybody five questions. You're going to get two in the beginning. You're going to get kind of three in the end, but then in the middle, mm -hmm. I actually have no idea what we're going to talk about, but whatever mm -hmm. it is, it's going to add lots of positive impact on the going along family. So uh, as right. long as you're ready to get started, I'd like to go ahead and uh, kind of get the conversation moving. Let's rock and roll. All right, let's rock and roll, man. So the very first question is, I kind of told a little bit, but can you help the going along family understand where is it that you live in the U.S.? I live in Tacoma, Washington. Um, I'm from Baltimore, Maryland, um, but went into the military. Um, served 16 years, got early retirement out there, um, out the Air Force and uh, got a W-2 job as soon as I got out. And I've been remained here in Washington for 12 years. So I live in Tacoma, fantastic. Washington. All right. Tacoma, Washington. So from East Coast to West Coast. So that sounds fantastic in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and, and so with that, kind of help us also to understand as the second question is, what's the most positive thing that has happened to you in the last 24 hours? 
just being alive, man. I mean, it's it's a pleasure. It's it's God given. Um, you know, we can't take time is is always leaving us. And, yep. you know, I'm just appreciative for what God has given me, man. So I'm just I'm just real appreciative to be alive, um, to be a dad um, and have an opportunity every day to move forward in life. You know, I absolutely love that, uh, Aaron. And it's one of those things that it it that we don't have to look really, really far beyond. And many days is if you can wake up and you're healthy and and happy. And, and sometimes if you're just healthy, that is such a given, uh, just such a I gift. And so I appreciate you recognizing that. And uh, and it's it's fantastic. So I, I want to here's two things. First and foremost, as you mentioned, 16 year service, I really would like to thank you, and also on behalf of the Go Long family uh, for your service uh, and everything that uh, that you did and continue to do. So appreciate that very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you yes. very much. And you know what? The other thing is with that, like every single week, the Going Long family, or twice a week, the Going Long family, they kind of listen to me talk and introduce guests. And today, you're our special guest, and I tried to do the best of my ability, knowing that I give myself this impossible task of trying to <laughs> give your backstory in like two and a half seconds ain't going to ever happen. Right. So they always forgive me. I hope you can forgive me, but more importantly, you can help me by mm -hmm. telling us your backstory in your own words. Uh, and Aaron, if you could also too, while you're telling us the backstory, if you could really think about some of the really important decisions that you've made to get to this point in your journey, and then we'll see where we take the conversation from there. Yeah. So, um, as I said, you know, I, I, um, I served 16 years in the military <clears throat> and when I, when I got out, uh, like I said, I got a W-2 job. I'm still working there um, currently. And, you know, it was hunky-dory when I was in. And then one day a coworker said, you know, Aaron, you're going to be at this job for another 20 years. And I said, no, I'm not. And that's when my entrepreneurial spirit came. I started getting into different um, entrepreneur things like market level marketing. I know a lot of people have done that. I dropped shipping a little bit. But uh, eventually I got into real estate and started to, uh, wholesale a little bit, um, got into a little Airbnb, but then started focusing on, on multifamily. Um, I got my, and, and one thing too is, and I always emphasize this at the time I was still living in an apartment during this whole time frame. And one day I was, I was at a meetup, local meetup here and a guy said, Hey man, you know, you're a military. I said, yeah. He said, why don't you not use the benefits? Why don't you use your VA loan? And I was like, uh, why are you not using it? Uh, I couldn't answer, I couldn't answer the question. So and he kept on peppering me about it. I said, you know what? I'm gonna use it, man. And I would say about six months later, I used my VA loan, um, got my duplex where I'm living in right now. And I've been on a mission ever since to really talk to veterans about uh using their benefits. Um, because uh, you know, you fought for your country, you know, you serve in your country, um, use the benefits that you've been, you've been given. So that's been really my journey with that. And also, you know, just, just understanding, learning much about real estate as much as possible. Uh, I have a mentor or coach now who's helping me out, um, you know, and uh, got into a different groups and, you know, just networking as much as possible and, and uh, loving it. Fantastic. So, you know what, when, and when you can think about kind of, that you continue to expand your, your network, you're getting involved, you, you, you have a clear focus in terms of who you want to be able to, to serve. It, you, it's something that you've done from the very beginning. As you mentioned, you served your country for 16 years directly uh, and continue to, to do that in a number of different ways. One of the things that really struck me about what you said is you were serving 16 years and someone said that you had 20 years, another 20 years, and you said to yourself, mm, no, I don't. Well, a lot of times people are in, you would have been in your position and said, okay, well, yeah, it's only another 20 years and then I get my benefits for the rest of my life and all this other kind of stuff. So what, what do you think it was that was in you that made you think, no, nah, I don't think I'm going to do this for another 20 years. I'm not, I'm not doing that because it's not in everybody. Right. Yeah. So I just, I just had a mindset shift during that time frame because I was like, man, you know, like it's 20 years seems so long. I mean, like there's nothing wrong with my job, you know, and at all, but I felt like this, that's not just life. There's more than life than that. And why can't I explore something for myself to not only, um, you know, work for myself, but also build a legacy for me and my family. So um, that's why I started getting into different things um, and, and start really opening my mind to different possibilities after that. So 
you know, it took me a journey. Um, but, you know, I start reading different things, started, you know, meeting more people, start going to meetups of different kinds, not just real estate, but just different kinds and being around different people and seeing their lifestyles and, and talking to people who have been very, very successful in their in their field. So and that really just opened my mind even more and, and gave me the hope that I can be the same at some point. So being able to do the same at some point, right? It's part of a journey and you're sharing a bit of that journey with us right now, Aaron. Mm -hmm. But as I'm listening to you, it, it sounds very similar to a track that I went on, right? I spent a lot of time working in cor in the corporate world and I was in very much middle management and I worked across Europe, Middle East and Africa. I worked and traveled throughout some 86 different countries and there was kind of this path that I was going down and I, I but I, I was losing control. And so I decided to start investing in real estate and I started in real estate, but what that did, and it sounds very similar that you were on a journey because you knew something was inside. It just opened my mind to the possibilities of doing other things. Then I started investing in, uh, you know, things that were not related to real estate. And, and, and so I think a lot of people can relate to what you're talking about, but maybe you can take us a little bit more deeper into that journey because you said that you were involved in different types of masterminds and coaching and networking. And, but you said one of the things that they weren't all real estate. So maybe help us explore a little bit more of this path of once your mind started opening, kind of what things were you exposed to? Um, that's a good question, man. I love it. Um, so when I started going to mark level marketing uh, and started to be around certain people and start listening to the tapes that they have and actually meeting um, some of the, the top people that gave me hope uh, that like, man, you know what? I can do it. If, if, if they can do it, why can't I? If, if they've been a successful pair, why can't I? If, if they have failed many, many times, but picked themselves up and got to the point where they are right now, why can't I? So, and, and then, you know, uh, actually going to drop shipping and talking to a couple people here and there. Um, I, I, I got up when I'm doing drop shipping, it was really quick because it's supposed to be a partnership and my two partners kind of did not, uh, uh um, was not all in like I was. <laughs> so mm -hmm. that kind of dropped shipping, but I mean, quickly, but, um, you know, and, and for real estate, going to the real estate meetups that I've been to, uh, around here in the Seattle region, um, I met some very successful people that came that flew in from other, um, states to talk. Um, so, uh, a guy named Tar Yarber, um, he's on bigger pockets and things like that. He had his meetups, and that really exposed me to a lot of uh, people who are doing really big things in real estate. Um, and you know, and, and then I actually I went to one of his conferences and volunteered one of his conferences. So I really met some some people like Ashley Wilson, Lika, um, others, and that really just motivated me even more. You know, saying, man, you know what? Why can't Aaron do it? You know, um, I, I know everybody goes through pain. It's adversity. Everybody has adversity in your life. But mm -hmm. it's the people who pick themselves up and continue to go. that are going to be successful. And, and like I said, I mean, I know I've said before, but why can't I do the same thing? Yeah, and when you ask, it depends a lot of what, what questions you're asking yourself, right? And, and to your point it's not what are other people doing is why, why could I not do that? Or what do I have to do in order to be able to do the same thing? And uh, it's very similar. We, uh, the other day we were, I think it was the day before yesterday, we made some, we made a post and it's one of those things also too. It's not uh, that you fall down 19 times. The important thing is that you get up the 20th time and that you continue to move forward. Right. And, and that is a lot, it has a lot to do with mindset. And what I want the going long family to really listen to what you're saying is, Yes, you found this path, which is real estate. And we're going to come back to that. But many times it's not the only path. There are other, there are other uh, like ancillary paths that can really feed into whatever your overall life vision is or your overall life goal. And to your point, one of the vehicles that allows you to get there can be real estate. Um, and speaking of vehicles, you, you, I want to come back to one of the other things that you said in the very beginning. You said that some, one of your one of one of your colleagues had mentioned to you that they ask you the question like are you using your va loan and it seemed like it, was, it just kind of went a little bit blank and i think that happens a lot but i'm just curious first and foremost when he talked to you about the va loan did you even have any idea what he was talking about no okay uh, for the most part, but, no. okay perfect so so appreciate that and i love your honesty number one number two 
after that, kind of what happened? Because he was talking to you about something that you didn't know anything about. And it sounded like it took a couple months. I think you said six months before you actually went forward. But talk to us about the time that he talked to you about this concept that you'd never heard about before to the time that you actually took action. What took place? So I always talk about this on my meetup. I always say that, you know, when in my circles, no one talked about a real estate. No one talked about the VA loan. Um, yeah. that, that's not talked about. Finances aren't really talked about in the military. A lot of times, yeah. uh, you know, people going through high school, they're not taught, they don't have financial classes. Um, you know, NCOs, uh, commission officers don't have the time to really talk to people about finances. So I think that's a missing void um, that we have in the military and, and not just in the military, but in life, people don't talk about finances as much. Um, so, I, you know, I, I just went along my way. I, didn't, I never used it. 60 years, I never used it. I know many, many people who have never used it. And mm -hmm. that's why I've said I've, I've been very hardcore about that, because once I realized the benefits of it and how not only I can buy a house, but maybe down the road, build generational wealth. Uh, we we know, Billy, people who have used a VA loan to build generational wealth or have passive income coming in, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, the more I digged in, the more I was like, man, I got to use it. And the six months uh, was because I just couldn't find the right property. That was that was took the long. I was I, I think I was already to roll in, a, mm -hmm. in less than a month, but it took right. me a while to find that right property um, that I really wanted. Um, during that time frame, and, and then you know, just going through the the, the, the um, inspection and things like that. But uh, that that really just motivated me that somebody who who's, who's not, wasn't a military guy, but he knew mm -hmm. about the VA loan, talked to me, and it was like, man, like, and, and, and that's why I always emphasize now: use use what you have. A lot of a lot of us not not just military. Look, a lot of people don't use what they have. A lot of us go do training classes and different things like that, but we don't use the benefits. We don't come back to them. We don't review our notes and things like that for whatever reason. So a lot of benefits or, or research that we have done in the past is goes to waste. So, and it definitely goes, it can go to waste if we don't go back, re review, take up on the actions that we, that we have uh, written down when we were in a meeting or on a Zoom call or, or whatever the case, or you're learning just a new word. Like that happened to me all the time. And I think part of it is having a curious mind, you know, speaking five languages, you get out there and you're like, hey, listen, this is something I've never heard before. And so speaking of which, I don't want anybody to get left behind because you mentioned a, a term NCO. What does that mean? A uh, non-commissioned officer. Okay. A non-commissioned officer. So yeah. if you're listening to that, you can rewind and go back and just to make sure. Cause it's, and it's very similar to when you talked about before a VA loan, like if you've never heard of it, you go like, well, hang on a second. I, I can't action anything unless I actually actually know what you're talking about. So VA right. loan was a right. foreign concept. I'd not heard NCO, but now me and the entire going along family knows that that's a non-commissioned officer. Uh, and so you, you can, you can understand more um, about, about what you were, what you were talking about before, but and one, just, one, thing, and one thing, one thing too about that. Let me just add yeah. this one point on, please. And I'm only 22% of all veterans. We have like 19.5 million veterans in the United States use their tuition assistance, um, for college that we're given as military members and only 15% of all veterans use your VA loan. So remember, just look at it. 19.5 million veterans, only 15% use a VA loan. Wow. Uh, what's that quick math? That's like six, six million, something like that. So, wow. Uh, yeah, it's, well, it's 85% away from who should be using it or could be using Absolutely. it. I guess it's Absolutely. probably the better way to look at it. But coming, so then when you, when you're thinking about this, what I, the, the way that you frame this conversation is one that doesn't matter really what area you are working in or doing. It's, it's a tool. And number one, you have to understand that the tool exists so whether it's a, a VA loan or it's a specific type of, of loan or it's a specific type of vehicle that allows you to get whatever result you 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 want to get, number one, you have to know that it exists. So you have to be in the right areas, the right rooms. And it sounds like that's what you were doing. And then secondly, you have to be a, not afraid to take action on it. So maybe you could talk to us a little bit about as now that you started learning that, I know that one of the ways that you continue to pay things forward is you're, you're, you've taken what you learned, you've put it into practice to go out and have your, your, your own properties, getting closer to your own goals, your own dreams, starting to build that generational wealth. But talk to us a little bit also too, about how are you engaging with more, both uh, veterans, military, 
as well as civilians. Talk to us about how you're getting your word out and how you're connecting and helping to bridge those gaps of new terms, new words, and, and, and those tools that maybe a lot of people don't know even exist to help them today. Okay. So uh, let me give you a backstory about the VA loan first. The VA loan is a no money down loan that you can use to buy a one to four units. So that's why it's so valuable for us. Um, you know, you don't find that in civilians uh, use, using that, but it's a benefit that we have as, as a military members is that you don't have to pay for everything. Maybe some couple closing costs, something like that. But if you have a disability, you might not even pay for co- closing costs. So the VA loan can be very, very effective to at least buy it. A one okay. unit. And that's for one. So one to four units. And of course, everybody in, in what we're talking about, this is these are examples and these are, are, are cases that Aaron's talking about. Of course, you want to talk to your own team members. I'm sure Aaron will even give you an opportunity to reach out to him so he can tell you more about his experience when, when we're done here with the conversation. But just to make sure I also understand. So this is for uh, active as well as veterans. Is that correct? Yes. yes. Active service yes. members as, as yes. well as retired. Okay. Yes. Fantastic. Yes. And one to, f- one to four unit. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. So, so that's why it, that's such a, a valuable, um, a valuable tool that you can use to, you know, not only buy a, a, a house for you and your family, but also, um, you know, uh, uh, start building generational wealth if you, if you use it the right way, because check this out, Billy, all you had to do is live there one year. You can move out after that one year and hmm. turn that loan, that V loan to a conventional loan and use it again the next year. So just imagine in four years, you can have four, let's say four fourplexes, and you know, uh, you can have 16 tenants or 15 tenants if you live in one of them. So that's that's the, the value of, of the VA loan. And it's, you know, there's some things that you should do, like you know, hire a property manager or something like that. Because a lot of people, what a lot of people do is they well, some people do in the military, they they use a VA loan and then they PCS or they go to another duty station but they still have that property at the original duty station. So there's a so lot of you, 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 you have to let us know PCS. What does that mean? So PCS means that they're moving from one, one location to another. So they're going from one base to another. So they're, okay. they're, they're, yeah. So that's, that's what PCS means. So, okay. um, but, but yeah, so that's, that's the whole gist of it. But going back to your original question, um, I have my own meetup. Uh, it's called all in on real estate. And I interview people like yourself, uh, every week, every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern time to talk about um, the, the different um, nuances, the different niches in real estate to educate people. And then I put everything on my YouTube page. Um, I also have a clubhouse room. Um, and, you know, I'm, it's all about education. You know, I'm always trying to educate people. So I have I have moderators on my clubhouse room and, you know, they have different uh, specialties they into in real estate. And we try to educate people as much as possible. So, um, I make myself accessible to people. I go to meetups, um, other people's meetups. Uh, I'm always talking about, you know, my meetup or talking about the military to talk to people as much as possible about it. So people, a lot of people reach out to me and, you know, I try to give them some, some help as much as possible. So, and there's, a, there's a, you don't have to be military to talk to me. Um, I try to give them as much information as possible. Um, you know, put stuff on social media posts and things like that to, to help out as much as possible. Because I, I want people to start their own path to build generational wealth for them and their families. And why are you so like uh, passionate about that? About because you've mentioned generational wealth and being able to do that, and and you're working towards that. You're working to help other people. What drives that passion in you for that? Because I've seen too many people who they they had that that limited mindset. You know, uh, I can't do it. I, I you know I have a best friend who we we had a a long discussion about that. Well, man, you might be a millionaire, but I, I, I'll be good where I'm at. Why? 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 Why can't you see yourself getting there? It doesn't have to be real estate. It can be something else. But strive to be the best. You only here. You only on earth for so long. You only have you have a shelf life. Strive, strive to be the best. Don't limit yourself. And I see too many people limit themselves because of their own insecurities, maybe fears. I don't know, but I think that we also strive to do that, and then also pay it back. And, and pass on to other people. And finally, you have a family. Why don't you have a legacy, build a legacy so that it passes on to the next generation? I mean, it's, it's crazy. Look at the Rockefellers. Rockefeller, uh, John Rock, G. Rockefeller has been dead for over 100 years, but his, his, um, because of his trust, they still um, donate billions of dollars every year because of the hard work he did and then the instructions he had in his trust because a lot of times generation wealth has gone in three generations. But because of what they did, 
they still pass it down well to, to another generation. Awesome. Yeah. And when you, and so when you see those other patterns, right, because success leaves clues, as they say all the time. And so you use a perfect example of, or an excellent example. I don't know if it's a perfect one, but it's a, it's a really good example of when, when you understand what you can do, not only to, to generate, but to preserve and accelerate your, your wealth and have it to live on. Uh, also part of that is making sure that you're in the right rooms with the right people, getting the right bits of information. I grew up most of my life having had no clue. Um, I didn't even, I had these misperceptions of what trust funds and trust fund babies were and all that other kind mm -hmm. of stuff. But so, so also what I see you doing and the way that you are leveraging both social media to connect with people online, as well as what it sounds like, like you're doing now is also to connecting with people offline. Uh, it just allows you to share the things that you're learning. Um, and as you continue to learn and grow, then those that are around you and with you continue to learn uh, and grow as well. But one of the other things that you mentioned, you said you, you definitely have a focus on and a mission to be able to, to serve military, uh, military people, people, either that they are active or are retired. But you also said that, you know, you really, you want to be able to share this information with civilians as well. And I'm just curious, as you're interacting with civilians um, versus, I guess, versus in this specific, specific instance, uh, military, what are some of the different, um, I guess, maybe some of the differences that you see in terms of being able to interact or, and or helping that individual move forward maybe faster? I, I love, I love the questions. I love the questions, man. I love it. Um, I think when you talk to the military people, there's a different mindset because of what they did, how they served. So I can, I can resonate with them and say, and give them like a little example of different things like, Hey, remember, you know, have you served overseas and blah, blah, blah. And then I can give them an example of how like in Europe, it's the roads are smaller in the United States, the, the food is smaller, things like that, that. I can, I can get somebody to laugh about. Right. And then tell a story and then say, man, you know, how about you, you, you travel the world? How about you start doing this? So you travel the world more. And it resonates with them because they travel the world. They've seen different things. Why not do it more? With a civilian, um, a lot of times, some people, um, as you know, Billy, some people don't, they live about like, 20 miles away from the from where they was born at a lot of times. So it's a different, it's a different thing. But, and, and then when you ask a lot of people, I'm surprised, but that's my life. A lot of people don't travel. What do you think they would? Most people have not gone outside the United States. A lot of people have not traveled and seen 40, 40 states or 30 states, you know, um, in their own little world. So, you know, you got to really just uh, get to the point where you can talk to them about certain things. So if some, like, for instance, I'll say to in Montana uh, for, and, and both my kids were born there. So if I say, if, if they are from Montana or something like that, I'm like, the first thing I say, man, you from big sky country, man. Wow. You know, what school do you like? Like Montana State in Montana. And you can see people like, oh, you've been to Montana before? Yeah. So, you know, it, it's, it's um, you just really got to find that common theme. And then once you get that common theme, it's, it's, it's just like talking to somebody in the military. You just get, you just go from there and um, you open some eyes up. But I, I'll tell you, I, I know you've been to this and so many people told me this. So many people came to me and asked me for help or what should I look at? And they never come back. And then when you ask them, hey, you know, how you been? Oh, I, I, you know, I've been going through life. And OK, OK. But you don't want people to drain you, but you want to help people as much as possible. But you understand that they got they got to start their own journey. Like you said, you got to take massive action. And and a lot of times people don't. Yeah, it is one of those things. That it really does come down to each individual's ability to take action. You can you can have all the theory in the world. You can have the best intentions in the world. But unless you are willing to probably not look very good the first couple of times you try something and maybe make some mistakes. And I, and I put my hand up, I, look, I'm a recovering perfectionist. And so I used to think I, I wanted to do, do things perfectly the first time. And when I started realizing that my, the only way that I could impact more lives positively was getting out of my own way, recognizing I'm going to make a lot of mistakes in the beginning. And then afterwards, you're going to learn, you're going to figure out what it is that you need to fix so that you can move forward faster, uh, collect and be surrounded by those individuals that are going to help you move forward. Then you can also help them move forward. It all makes sense. And, right. and the one, and the, and the thing that I also want the going long family to really pay attention to what you've just talked about was 
yes, as you have your military, you had your military career and there's a lot of things that you really understand. It's because you have a shared common uh, background. It's just like when I speak to a lot of people who are uh, IT sales professionals, we've, we've been in those same situations and leading teams across Europe, Middle East and Africa, or maybe you've traveled to 86 countries. So it's it, what, what I love that you're saying to us, and it's just reinforcing a message, Aaron, is once again, it's what are the tools that you have to be able to go out and connect with others, build relationships, and then those relationships will go beyond, you know, so many different things, whether you're a civilian or, uh, uh, or you've been in the military or are still active in the military. So, um, right. Right. Sorry. Did you want to say something else? Go ahead. Well, yeah. Well, like, I mean, just look at real estate, for instance, like I tell people about Maurice Philogene and about how he built wealth because he used a VA loan. Or I can talk to people about uh, women, about Ashley Wilson, about her book, on the only woman in the room and that would resonate with people. Or I talked to people about AJ Osborne, who I've talked to, who has an incredible story about um, the, the trials, tribulations he's been through his life. So, you know, I can always adapt to that to, to the person is because I can always tell stories about people I've met personally um, and their and what they've gone through in their life. And the reason that you can do that is because you continue to push yourself outside of whatever your comfort zone is. You specifically, uh, Aaron, because you're you're meeting new people and you're consistently pushing outward, uh, elevating the, the, what you know and 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 also your network, which I think is absolutely phenomenal. Um, you, I guess before we kind of get into the going long final three, I I am just also curious because I know you work with a lot of different people and a uh, number of people are, are investors and 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 people are still looking to either invest themselves directly or indirectly. But what are some of the things that you've seen from people that are wanting to invest, but they just kind of feel a little bit stuck? I think you alluded to a little bit of it earlier, but maybe you could just drill down on it. What, what gets people that are, want to invest either directly or indirectly, passively, actively, and they just can't seem to move forward? They're stuck. What, what do you, what's the biggest thing you see? I think it's fear, man. I think it's fear of an unknown fear of Oh man, I don't know about my money. I worked so hard on my money. Is this the right? This is the right deal for me. I want to get into it, but uh, you know, it, it, people get real tight fit, tight fisted um, during that opportunity. Um, and also, people don't syndicate enough. Don't come. Don't come together. They always want to hold on to the whole piece of pie instead of, of knowing that the power of coming together, you can you can achieve so much more. Um, so I, I think it's just, I, I think it goes back to mindset, man. It really does because, um, yes, yes, you're going to take a chance by if you're going to invest your money into something. It's a chance. It's, there's no guarantees in life. So um, you know, so you you you're going to take a chance. But if you do your do your background, and you got to um, take out the noise because you can always hear horror stories. Man, don't get in. Or people saying, don't get in that. Don't get in that. Don't get in that. Well, if we if we listen to everybody else, you're gonna be broke like everybody else. And then number two is, like I said, find like-minded individuals and be around them. Uh, you know, some, sometimes you might gotta cut people out your out your inner circle if their naysayers are not going going where you like to get to where you want to go to. Um, and then maybe when you get someone, you can pick them pick them up or something like that. But sometimes you gotta cut the noise out and really be laser focused, and then look for others who are doing the same path. Now go on the same path that you're going and maybe join forces. And like I said, the potential is unlimited if you have like-minded individuals around you. And, you know, with that, as you start talking about like-minded individuals, and, and sometimes you do have to make very difficult decisions in your life if you want to move in a particular direction. And that direction is being impeded because the people that you knew before don't want you to go there. You're going to have to look at yourself in the mirror and say, do, do, do I want the goal enough or do I just want to keep doing the same stuff that I'm doing and hanging out with the same people? So that's a part of the process. Um, I know that you've done that type of thing as well, Aaron, and you've created your uh, you continue to create a, a group of like minded people that want to move in the in the right direction. I would love for you to tell us just a little bit more about your the, your meetup that you do, the virtual meetup that you do uh, specifically. And then we're going to get into the going long final three. So. Uh, like I said, it's it's every Thursday at 7 p.m. And I look for people who have different niches in real estate. I, I wanted to be a, a well-rounded um, uh, meetup. I, I know I'm in multifamily, uh, commercial multifamily, but I wanted to have a meetup where anybody can watch. So um, anybody can go to my YouTube page, look at it and say, oh, you know what? Hey, you know what? I might want to get into short-term rentals or dang, you know, that 
that tax lien and deeds look pretty good. I might got to reach out to that person or man, that that self storage looks pretty good. You know, so I want to make well rounded so that anybody can look at it, look, watch a video, see me interview somebody. And say, you know, I can maybe go down that path. Hey, Aaron, can I, can I talk to that person? Sure. You know, and and or they just want to go down that path because I feel like you, you had to be educated first and you had to have that something that has to get you. And I tell people all the time, if you want to get into real estate, you got to find at least you got to find one niche that you have a passion for or really like to say you're doing and go down that path. And and don't be the shiny light guy like I was for so, for so long. Yeah, those shiny objects can really blind you and keep you from moving forward uh, for quite a while. So, and just yes. again, that's that's seven p.m. Eastern Standard Time, depending on where you are in the world, uh, just to make sure that you're there. And it also sounds like once those sessions take place, they're then on. You can find them over on your YouTube page. So, I appreciate uh, appreciate you sharing that, Aaron. And you know what? Like, thing is, we got to kind of get into the going long final three. But the thing is, because you are our special guest for this week, I never ask anyone the going long final three. And as I said, you're our special guest, so I'm not going to ask you. I'm not going to make this the first conversation unless you tell me that you're ready for me to ask you. So, Aaron, are you ready? Oh, yes. Yes. Ah, yeah, man. You were born ready. You were born ready. So here we go. So we started with you over in Tacoma, Washington. I want to bring it back to this side of the pond because although I'm from Columbus, Ohio, mm -hmm. I now call Barcelona, Spain, my home. So mm -hmm. I would love for you to share with us what is your favorite European city that you've either visited or is still on your bucket list to visit, Aaron? Man, I've been there many times. I love London, man. That's my favorite international city. Uh, I've been there. I, I, I love the atmosphere, the food, um, just, just being in that city. I, I just love London. All right, London, another vote for London. I'm actually going to be there by, by the time this goes live. I will have already been there, but I'm going at least two times this year that I know of. So in, in this year, 2022. So I uh, appreciate you sharing that with us. And then here's the next question. The question number two really has a lot to do with the, the very good fortune that I've had to understand and meet a lot of very successful people. And Aaron, I consider you to be someone who is very successful. You're continuously going out, impacting other people's lives. And you know, the thing is, is as I've seen a lot of successful people, one of the things that really separates successful people from everybody else, Aaron, is that successful people, unlike most, when they put their mind to something and they want to go out and do it, the very first time that they put their mind or their action to things, they get it right. And they are then able to get and move people. Did I just say that? I think I just said that. Um, Hang on a second. No, Aaron, don't worry, man. It's a, it's a joke. It's a joke. <laughs> it's, it's an inside joke. <laughs> Everybody here, you, you got to watch this because Aaron's face was like, oh my gosh, Billy, no, no. Now it's a joke. <laughs> Everybody, everybody knows the inside, the inside, this, we're part of the inside joke. The going long family knows about this. And so don't worry. So it's that part is kind of a joke. So listen, the reality is Aaron, everybody makes mistakes, even right. successful people. Like the reality is successful people they make a whole lot more mistakes than most people, like probably right. 20 to 50 times more mistakes than everybody else. So right. the question was kind of a, a kind of a joke, but the reality is the, the people that are successful, and this is no joke, like this is not a joke. Mm -hmm. They do do one thing very, very differently. Every single time they do this differently. Any single time that a successful person makes a mistake, especially one that's relevant and impactful without a doubt, every single time they stop they learn from the mistake. They then put different strategies, tactics, and actions in place to minimize the probability of that exact same mistake happening again. So Aaron, I don't want you to think about the mistake today, but, or maybe you call it a learning opportunity. I don't really care, like, but you, you get the point. But more importantly than what happened, what's the one lesson that you know that someone in the Going Long family needs to hear today to help them minimize the probability of that exact same thing happening to them? What's the one lesson we need to know today? I think that you have to really be resilient. Uh, like I said earlier, we have adversity thrown at us. All, everybody has adversity. I don't care how successful you are, you're going to have adversity. I don't care if, if you made so many mistakes and you're now on a successful path, adversity will come. Uh, you know, for instance, if you're doing real estate, you might have a pipe bust at, at your property or something like that. You know, uh, you might have um, uh, whatever happens, but you got to be resilient and understand that those things have come to pass. But your mindset and your belief has to stay focused on on your goals and write down your goals every day um, and, and talk about them. 
talking to, talking about my people. I, for instance, Billy, I have a, I have all my goals, uh, my year goals on my wall. So when I wake up, I turn. That's my goals right there. I see it every day. So um, things are going to happen in your life, but you got to be resilient and keep that laser focus. Absolutely. Being resilient. Love that. And this is something that I am sure we are going to be writing down like you have your goals written on your walls and we'll be able to look at them, continue to be consistent, resilient and continue to move forward. So and this is going to kind of wrap us up. This is question number three, Aaron. And it really is about helping us to fill the brain with knowledge. So help us understand what is the one book that you would recommend to the Going Long family today? Um. Man, it's a lot of this is several good books I read. Uh, I'm a, I'm a probably going to say the one thing. Uh, that's a that's a very very good book uh, because it just it just gets you in, in that belief that just keep that focus on one thing. Um, you know, if you can focus on one thing at a time, that's really going to help you out because you can be scatterbrained by having all these different tasks you got to do. But if you keep on one thing, one path, um, one focus, you're going to be very very successful. Fantastic. So we'll make sure that we include that in the in the show notes as well. So the one thing we get another vote. Amazing. Absolutely amazing book. Agree with you there. And I uh, really appreciate you you sharing that. And so, you know, I can, like one of the things about hosting this show is I get to ask so many questions and get to speak to so many experts like yourself, Aaron. But the thing is, I always get sad because these conversations go by so fast. Like, I can't, I can't believe, I can't believe we're already done, man. It feels like we just started like thirty seconds ago. So, I know, right? Like, yeah, yeah, man. But I, you know, and I start thinking about you, you in the in the sixteen years of service that you had, and that conversation that you had that that person was like twenty years, and you're like, what? I don't really, I don't. Even though you didn't say it out loud, you're thinking to yourself, nah, I can't really see this going on for another twenty years. And so you, you and so from that, it really gave you the the, the the impetus to go out and start to look at different areas and, and you wanted to find out more about short-term rentals, wholesaling, and you got kind of dabble in the number of different things. And then you had a conversation with somebody that told you about a tool that you had never heard of, the VA loan. And then you went from there and you t then you, you got started right away. You were ready in a month. And then maybe six months later is when you finally got started into that, but you were looking and you were going through your due diligence and, and taking the knowledge that you were learning. And not only did you get started on your path to building generational wealth, you've also realized that it's no fun just to go by yourself. And it's about how can you also help to impact other people, whether they're military, civilian, and or wherever they are in their life is really to be able to continue to expand your network. You're doing that. You've got your different social media channels. You have the meetups that you that you uh, that you host every week, every Thursday at uh, at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is phenomenal. And I know that there are so many people that are like, wow, man, I, you know, Aaron, I love this story, man. I want to really figure out how can I find out more about what it is that you're doing, Aaron? How can I find out more about um, about your company? So help me help the Going Long family and help us understand what is the best way for the Going Long family to reach out and contact you? Uh, you can always find me on LinkedIn. You can message me on LinkedIn. Just look at my name, Aaron Goins. Uh, you can find me on uh, Instagram. Hey, Aaron, will, uh, you spell, will you spell your name because it's unique, which means that the entire Going Long family will be able to find you very easily? Okay. Um, so it's Aaron, but it's the H inside. So it's A-H-A-R-O-N. My mom will be a little bit different. <laughs> Uh, G O I N S. I'm the only Aaron Goins in the world. So A H A R O N uh, G O I N S. Um, you can find me at All In Homes A L L I N H H S dot com. Um, you can uh, find me on Instagram. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, Aaron Goins as well. So, um, and then um, you can always email me to Aaron dot Goins at gmail dot com. So um, there's the place you can find me at. All yeah, right, I, would fantastic. Love, I would love to talk to you and have a conversation. And we, right, talk, hey, we can talk about overseas too, man. I've been overseas, man. I've been to Europe and Japan and, you know, I mean, Korea. So yeah, you know. Which, which will be phenomenal. And one of the things I do want to ask of the Going Along family, and I ask you every single time, so especially on LinkedIn, because you have the possibility to make it a personalized invitation. When you reach out to Aaron, will you please just remind him that you've already invested time and energy listening or watching us or probably both knowing uh, knowing the Going Along family, you probably watched the video version and you've listened, uh, but just making that connection a bit more authentic. Uh, it's going to help you and Aaron continue the conversation because it's going to help him also recognize that, yes, you've already invested time. He knows what the conversation was about and you can continue to move forward faster. So. Um, with that, Aaron, listen, like I said, man, I really, this was a long time coming. I really appreciate you investing your time with me and the entire Going Long family. And uh, thank you from the bottom of my heart, man. Thank you so much. Man, thank you, Billy, man. It's been a pleasure, man. I love it. I love it. Thanks so much, man.
All right. Fantastic. If you give me like 15 seconds just to wrap things up with the Going Long family, I would uh, would appreciate it. So listen, Going Long family, you just had a chance to hear from Mr. Aaron Goins, A with the H in the middle, Aaron. Uh, so listen, he's really reaching out. He's continuing to grow his tribe, connecting people, military, civilians, and just continuing to help move along and move the, in the path forward to building generational wealth, connecting and surrounding yourself with like-minded individuals. He's giving you ways to contact him, take him up on the offer, reach out to him, make that connection, uh, let him know that the Going Along family, we like to take action here. And listen, I'm sure if you're out in the Tacoma, Washington area, he'd love to meet up with you. He's into that kind of stuff, connecting with people. So uh, with that stated, I'm really looking forward to welcoming you back on the very next conversation. So until then, go out and make it a great day. And thank you very much.